Hey everybody, Jason here. So I'm out at Algonquin Park Access 1, Kawewemog Lake or Round Lake. I think I pronounced the indigenous name correctly, but possibly not. Um, yeah, I'm out on a solo trip. I'm in a brand new canoe that I just built, a solo canoe. We'll talk about that later. And yeah, fire ban is still in effect in Algonquin, in the area. We've got forest fires burning, about, I don't know, I'm going to guess, uh, give or take 100 kilometers from here. Um, very little rain this summer, low water levels. Um, today is one of the longest lengths of the trip. Um, it's going to be... I think just over 15 kilometers that's linear so doesn't sound like much but uh, several portages one of which is two kilometers long and I think it's gonna be very likely that I'll have to do the portage in two trips and not just make it one you know I've got my big dry bag pack canoe and a food bag so I could potentially load the food bag in my dry bag but right now it's pretty full for the length of the trip so I'll probably do the food bag in the canoe and then my pack as separate trips so yeah anyhow it's uh, gonna be a hot day right now I think they're talking about it being 29 degrees Celsius and that it'll feel like 35 with the humidex I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit but Maybe I'll put the, the equivalent up over here somewhere. And yeah, it's a really nice day otherwise. So yeah, and I've got a lot of, lot of tripping, a lot of traveling to do today. So I better just really focus on getting moving. Okay, well, I'm at the first portage. Um, yeah, it's marked by the parks as 135 meters. Jeff's map has it at, I think, 65 meters, and I would definitely go with the Jeff's map uh, measurement. So, yeah, I'm just going to walk through, and just so you can get an idea, I've already taken my pack and the canoe over to the other side.
Okay, so yeah, there you go. So that's the portage. It's just uh, basically small little, it's very shallow, rocky. There's a tree down over there as well. Um, probably could have been passable, but just the tree, it's probably easier just to do the portage in that case. But yeah, probably passable really. So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna get back on uh, the river here and I don't have too much further and I'll be entering uh, Tea Lake and then I have another portage soon after that. Well, this is Tea Lake, or it says North Tea on the portage sign here. 
Again, the sign says that it's going to be 100 and, or no, 1,945 meters to get to Cisco Lake. Um, Jeff's map says 2010. I'm hoping the Ontario Parks Portage sign is right. Save me 50 or 60 meters. I'll take it. Um, yeah, it's really good conditions. Really, really good conditions. So, I'm just relaxing for a moment. You know, it's I'm not halfway of my day yet, but uh, you know, I've been whatever. I've been up since six o'clock and did the drive here and whatever. I've done two portages and I'm not sure how many kilometers I've paddled, but just relaxing a little bit, resting, stretch my legs and my back before I pick up the canoe and pack. So Tea Lake, or North Tea, what I'm on, it looks like a really nice lake. It's large and I've been warned about, you know, strong winds coming from the west, which is the way I paddled in. So paddling out, we'll see. Today the winds aren't that bad. At times it was starting to whip up, but yeah, not bad. Um, it looks nice that there's actually, like I'm wading out in it right now at the portage, and it looks like there's lots of sandy beaches at the campsites. Um, and if not sandy, like it's a mix of sand and pebbles here. So yeah, really nice and uh, nice clear water that, uh, you know, I haven't seen any leeches swimming around, so that's always a bonus. Yeah, I like this lake, so I might have to come back and just stay here for a couple nights at some point. Anyhow, I'm going to uh, hydrate, drink what I can, and then this portage actually, it, it does a V, it veers off. So um, it goes from where I am, North T. It goes to Lost Dog Lake, and that's a 485 meter portage. And somewhere between here and there, it V's off and heads to Cisco, which is marked 1945. So, yeah, thinking about it before, I was thinking that I think what I'll do is I'll split up my portage instead of walking the full two kilometers. I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll pack in whatever, probably my, my big pack and uh, camera and get to where it V's and put things down there and then come back and get the canoe and go back to that spot. At least that way, you know, when you have a canoe on your head, I don't know what the portage is like, it looks not bad, but with a canoe on your head, it's hard to see. So if I take the pack, I'll definitely be able to see where I'm going. And, uh, yeah, and then I'll just look for my pack when I have the canoe on my head and it'll be a good spot to stop. So, yeah, why don't I pull the canoe in a little and then uh, why don't we just have a quick look at what it looks like at the beginning here. Well, looks uphill. <laughs> Anyhow, I don't know how much of recording I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll record at the V. Um, it's two kilometers. I've got to basically do it, what, three times? So six kilometers. So it's gonna take me probably close to an hour to do it. So filming's gonna slow me down quite a bit. So, yeah, I'll try to film a little bit, but if not, it's just a portage. All right, well, I hiked up the top of the hill of the portage, and the V, the turnoff to 
what is it, Lost Dog and Cisco was only probably another, I don't know, 10, 20 meters further. So I decided just to keep going and it was uphill probably 25 meters past that V. So uphill for, I don't know, 75 to 100 meters, I would guess. Um, yeah, I kept going. There was no point putting the pack down 100 meters in. So then I got to this point. Let's see if you can see behind me. Uh, that's the canoe rested up on, I'm guessing rangers took that uh, uh, branch and they nailed it between two trees as like a makeshift canoe rest. So thank you, rangers. Um, so I got to there and figured that's a good spot to put the pack down and I went back and got the canoe. Now I'm hoping, it certainly feels like it was a kilometer, but I don't know if it was. You know, it might have only been 500 meters. I hope not. But uh, anyway, I'm going to pick up the main pack and hike further. Hopefully it's the rest of the way to Cisco Lake. Um, and then I'll come back and get the canoe. Then I have to paddle across Cisco, do another portage that's off the top of my head. I think it's 700 meters or thereabouts. And then I will get to my destination, Lorne Lake. <sighs> anyway, mosquitoes are kind of bad in here too. I had to use the bug spray, but actually I sprayed myself when I dropped the pack off, but then, yeah, I was getting swarmed. So I sprayed myself again. It's hot too. I don't know if you can see my face sweating like mad um yeah like i said the start it's probably like it feels around 30 degrees and it's kind of humid as well so yeah so it feels kind of like 30 to 35. anyhow enough rest time to go So I'm out on Cisco Lake now. The uh, where I had the canoe leaned up, yeah, that wasn't halfway at all. It was probably like a quarter of the way or a third of the way. Um, bugs got really bad. I sprayed bug spray like three times on me while doing that portage, maybe four times, and they were still swarming like crazy. I can't tell you how many times I've been bit. So. Yeah, I didn't bother doing any other filming, just get out on the water and uh, I'm gonna paddle. This is Cisco Lake, it's just a small lake. I'm gonna find the portage. So I've got one more portage to Lorne Lake where I'm headed tonight. So I'm going through my water pretty quick too. I probably only have like 300 mils left. So I may take a moment to filter some water before the portage. It's a, uh, I think 700 meters or a bit more than that. So. Yeah, I will want water at the end of it.
so I'm just getting on to Lorne Lake now. It's the portage from Cisco to Lorne behind me. I, uh, yeah, lots of mosquitoes again. You know, like really, I think it's just, you know, I get heated up and breathing heavy and that's the type of thing that mosquitoes are attracted to, so. So yeah, so I didn't bother filming any of the portage. At least I don't remember I did. I uh, actually, I'm feeling the effects of not drinking enough and not eating, so I got finished the portage there when I put the canoe down. I brought the orange, big orange bag first and then the canoe, but when I put the canoe down, I felt really lightheaded. So it's my own fault, I know, and I've been pushing it, but I didn't have anything to eat today. You know, last night I crashed out at my uh, my sister's cabin um, an hour south, and so I just got up at like, what, six o'clock and headed towards the park. Then I picked up a coffee through the drive through at Tim's, but where was that, Burke's Falls. So, and it was just too early feeling to eat. And then I made a mistake. I packed my trail mix down at the bottom of the food bag and I could have taken the time to dig it out, but I just figured just push through and just get to camp and have something to eat. And then also the, I had one liter of water, but you know, 30 degrees with Humidex 35, you know, lots of sweating, lots of lugging. Yeah, one liter isn't enough. My lips actually, they feel dry, so. So, I'm almost to my campsite, but I think I'm just gonna float for a minute. And I did filter some water at the other end of that portage. So I've got another, what, 400 mils. I think I'm just gonna relax, float, and just, yeah, hydrate myself, then find a campsite. Okay, well, found a campsite. That was a long day. Unfortunately, this is not the best campsite. It's kind of funny because a couple weeks ago, while doing another video out here in the park, I said that there really aren't any bad campsites. <laughs> yeah, this one's not the best. It's got a nice sitting arrangement. There's a spot for a tent. Just very shaded, so the bugs are gonna be horrible later on. Other thing is that the water is just, there's down trees everywhere, so there's, it's actually, it's not that deep. It's kind of gradual out, but there's lots of rocks and then lots of like rotting tree and whatnot. So, 
Yeah, I was hoping to have a nice spot for swimming. <laughs> and this isn't it. But I'm kind of exhausted and don't really care that much. I think I might, might if I can muster up the energy, paddle out to that island and uh, jump in from there. It's a nice looking island. Anyway, so let's have a look at this campsite. I got the canoe tied off, but I'll show you around. So as you can see, campfire spot, which is quite nice actually, you know, good bench, nice fire pit. And then over here we have a nice flat spot for a tent. Yeah, just thinking, I don't know if I'll even go that far, but I could set up right here behind the bench. I can't have a fire, so that spot right there. I could probably set up just in there. I'm only here for one night, so. Like, it's not bad, you know, it's wilderness, it's on my own, kind of secluded-like, or, you know, the serenity, but, whew. yeah, I just wanted somewhere I could jump into the water <laughs> after a hard day, so that island looks like a good spot to do it, and it's not far, so I'm going to unpack, I'm going to set up camp, hydrate, eat, and then I'm going to go for a swim, I think, over there. Yeah, I think I'm just going to set up camp right there. Well, I decided to move the tent. Had it set up. This would have done just fine, but once I started to really look around, the rangers actually made a almost like a platform. I could probably put a carpenter's level on it and it would be hard to be critical of it really they've used like a jack pine and then they filled it so it's a nice flat spot back there so yeah better spot for the tent set up my my line for my uh, food hang <clears throat> haven't gone swimming yet got the water filter going so and now I'm just boiling up some water it's gonna be MREs quite a bit on this trip Reason being, I'm packing really light, also fire ban, so yeah, making the most out of MREs. I have a few other things, and I brought my fishing rod, so I'm not going to fish today. It was a rough day on the trail, so I'm happy to just eat chicken teriyaki with rice and... Uh, yeah, I'd go for a swim afterwards. So yeah, so what am I doing on this trip? I haven't really talked about it. Well, I'm out on a solo trip. It's a, uh, I don't know how far I'll get. So I picked a route. I wanted, I've never been to Access 1. And so I decided to do a trip to Access 1 in Algonquin Park. And then I wanted it to be a loop. And then I also wanted it to be a challenge and since access one is in the northwest corner i thought why don't i try to focus on that northwest corner and so that's what i'm doing there's a loop right up at the top of the park in the northwest corner they're almost all really long portages and the trail doesn't get used very much right now i'm on lorne lake and it is busier, but tomorrow I'll be 
traveling to a lake called Matawaka and I believe that from there it's like slim pickings. So concern, yeah, very little information about this route. I searched blogs and forums. I found one blog article written, I can't remember, it might have been 10 years ago or something. Someone did this route and it took them 10 days to do. So he had some photos showing the route and there was a point in time, actually I think two points where he got lost, not lost, but disorientated lost. Um, another time where I believe he couldn't find the portage and then eventually found it in the photo of the portage, like it looked like a game trail, it, like grown over and everything. So, so yeah, so I'm concerned about that. Um, I asked about the, sorry, just watching the jet boil. Um, I asked on forums and stuff like that as well to get any advice. Uh, one guy replied and he said, so the, the main thing is in the last, actually it'll be like the middle of the trip, there's a creek, Facet Creek. And creeks make me nervous. Not if they're tiny or you're crossing them, but if they're long and you have to travel on them, you know, like five kilometers or something, you know, creeks are tiny. So, so I asked, put it out there. You know, does anybody know about the water levels? Like, what's traveling on Facet Creek like? He said, no worries. But uh, when I was at the park office getting my permit, uh, the park staff there said that a couple years ago the rangers were recommending nobody travel on that um, because of the water levels. Um, and that there were down trees and like blocking the creek and just with their branches and a few times she said branches full of spiders. <laughs> One or two spiders, I don't care, but are we talking thousands? So anyhow, yeah, I just, uh, so I'm a bit concerned with that. She even went so far as to talk to me about the possibility of turning around and like either coming back the way I did or uh, there's another long portage might be off of this might be off of Lauren I'll check the map later but um, anyway yeah she she warned me basically you know get there and have a look and if it looks muddy then consider turning around because of safety fair enough so yeah so I don't really know I don't really know we'll see I'd like to get all the way through this loop will you know start out in Round Lake Kawewemog where the access point is into Tea Lake then up and around a bunch of small lakes lots of portages uh, over to Manitou Lake and then back down to Tea Lake and out the way I came so a few interesting things about the trip though, I, uh, I've been uh, testing out solo canoes so far this summer. I, you'll remember I had the, the skin on frame canoe from back Backcountry Custom Canoes, um, the Brookie, which was a, like a solo canoe. I wouldn't necessarily call it a tripping canoe, but it was a solo canoe, skin on frame. And uh, I took that out and then the last trip out I had the Novacraft Pal and also the Soros River Tranquility. Um, now I had used a Pal before as well, familiar with that as a, it's a tandem boat but good for good for solo tripping as well. But anyhow I decided a month ago that I was going to build a solo canoe. And so that's what I have with me on this trip. I took a month and uh, basically whipped together a canoe. Uh, while building it, I had nicknamed it the Ugly Canoe because I used basically scrap wood. Um, no wood longer than eight feet long and 
because of that, you know, some of the strips were only three or four feet. So while building it, I had to ensure that they would stay down on the building form um, to get the right shape. And so I decided to use staples to hold them in place. I don't know if you know the building process of building a cedar strip boat, but you can check out, I have tons of videos on it. Um, I'm not going to go into the detail now and bore you. Anyhow, so I decided to use staples. So the canoe has tons of staple holes and tons of butt joints where the strips meet up. And so, yeah, so I decided just to nickname her the Ugly Canoe. Funny thing is that I still get tons of compliments on that, that boat. It's amazing. So now with it though, what I've done is I've basically designed her myself um, for what I would want a solo tripping canoe to be like. Um, it's not built to be fast because speed, speed is nice, but that's not important to me. What's important to me is that I want to have a stable boat that I can step into or stand up in, you know, that I can fish in comfortably, that I can do photography and, you know, or video and not have a lot of rocking because it's, you know, narrow or V-bottomed or something. Um, not too heavy, right? And, uh, yeah, so, so basically what I did was I combined two classic canoes, uh, the both chestnut designs, chestnut canoe company. One was the Bob Special and the other is the Prospector. And what I can tell you is it's performing fantastic. So what else? So paddles. Uh, in one of my last videos I talked about Expedition Plus paddle from Bending Branches being my favorite. And in this trip I'm using a different paddle that is carbon fiber shaft and it has a T grip just like the Expedition Plus. The blade is very similar. Um, so it is more or less a carbon fiber version of the, the Expedition Plus. It's the, the blade is wood and the handle's wood. It's just the shaft that's carbon fiber. Very light. It's good. You know, it's definitely noticeable while paddling and on the portage, everything is nice and light. So I've also brought the Bending Branches kayak paddle that I have that also is carbon fiber shaft. Um, I used it for a moment on Tea Lake, I think, or maybe it was before that, maybe on Kawewe Mug. But anyway, the boat isn't too wide that I can actually use a kayak paddle on it as well. So, so yeah, anyway, I'm gonna, uh, sort out my drink and have my dinner and then go for a swim.
Well, the campsite is uh, somewhat east facing, so no sunset tonight. I paddled out to get a bit of a look at it and uh, washed off a bit. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to get up early and head out or hang about. I would like to get up to Mattawaka at a decent time. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll see. I'll just play it by ear. I could, uh, I could find myself sleeping for a long time or who knows. So I did a rough calculation on uh, how much distance I traveled today and what I came up with was about 21 kilometers. So yeah, it was a good day, I guess. Anyhow, there's a uh, biting flies out and mosquitoes, so But I don't think it's a big day. I was going to say I've got a big day ahead of me, but I think my travel distance is actually, let me check. So one thing I do often for trips is, of course, I bring the map, but I also type out like day agendas kind of thing and distances and lengths of portages and how many campsites on a lake just quick reference type thing and I've got that here so um, yeah now tomorrow's a pretty easy day I've got in portages I've got 2,190 meters now that'll be times three, so 6,000 meters. Um, today I did around 9,000 meters, so nine kilometers in portages. Tomorrow I will have six. Um, linear distance, I'm only traveling five kilometers, so yeah. So, and I've got estimated time that probably be able to travel and probably be able to travel it in three hours so the filming slows me down big time so maybe four but yeah so if I ah there's no way that I will wait around here past 10 but if I was to wait around until 10 then I should be at my next camp by around 2 tomorrow afternoon so that would be good So yeah, easier day. The long portages are wiping me out, you know. I'm not as young as I look, <laughs> but I guess I'm not as old as I look either. Anyway, I'm wiped. So yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna combine today's video with tomorrow's, or end it there. We'll see.